Hi guys, um, so in today's video I'll be teaching you about um, interfacing and stabilizers that I personally like to use. <laughs> Hi, so I'm Becky Alexander Frost, um, I own RJF Makes. Um, Hi guys, so I own RJF Makes, I'm Becky Alexander Frost and basically I design patterns for a living for the last year or so. Um, so, hi everybody. Right, so please give me a thumbs up to make sure you can hear me and a like or whatever, whatever. Just tell me that you can hear me because I need to make sure Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, that's brilliant. Thank you. So, um, just spoke the minutes. Right, so today I'll be teaching you. Hi, Seven Quarter guest designer Emma and Jane. Hi. So, um, today I'm going to be talking a subject that is all about bag making spread and butter so that's like the interfacing and the stabilizers that go with inside the bag however this can be a minefield and it's a personal choice at the end of the day so i'm only and this is a big disclaimer so i don't want to start a war or anything um with other bag makers this is what I personally like to use. So I know likes of Joe Blogs down the road may not like what I use. So please take it with a pinch of salt. My motto is to try. It's trial and error. It's practice. If you don't like it when you first use it, move on to the next one and use something else or ask the question of what is available okay so if you have any questions please put them in the um comments below i was going to say the description below it's because i've just finished filming my youtube video um pop them in the description below and basically if i miss the question in this live feed i will happily answer any questions about stabilizers and interfacing after the live show so let's get into it <laughs> right let's start off with stabilizers um as in interfacings first right so i've got the ones that i use the most um when i look at the bag design that i'm making or i'm designing i work out whether I want it slouchy, like a hobo style bag, or if I want it to be a structured handbag. So then I work out what style of interfacing and stabiliser I will need. So I generally go for a softer interfacing whenever I make a slouchy bag and then I go with a stronger interface and when I make a structured bag. So when I say structured, I mean, if I was to have nothing in it, I still want it to stand up, right? If I want it, if I, I don't mind if it is foldable or anything, I basically um, put a lightweight interface in. So... Last week, a lot of you got confused with the with the actual um, tutorial that I gave last week, asking what Bookram was. Bookram is an interfacing. In America, they call it SFS101, or they call it um, ShapeFlex. In the UK, we can get those but they're very expensive so i use something that's from the impulse upholstery industry which is basically what curtains 
lightweight curtains uh, interface with. So Bookroom is a woven interfacing. It's fusible, so you've got a gluey side and a fabric side. It comes in three different weights. I use the, and most of my bags that I do actually make is with Bookroom because it makes the fabric last a lot longer. So I can pull it and everything and it won't rip. Some interfacings, the cheaper non-woven interfacings, tend to rip over time when you've ironed it onto the back of your fabric. So this is Bookroom Light. Bookroom Light is actually on a, a fabric that's um, a cotton fabric, which is woven less so the weave is a lot thinner a medium bookroom which you generally use on bag bottoms um, is woven a lot tighter and i tend to stay away from bookroom heavy because most machines if you haven't got an industrial machine won't go through bookroom heavy so as you can see bookroom light you can squash up it gives you a slouchy but also once it's ironed on to the fabric, let me find the sample. When it's ironed onto the fabric, it is actually very strong. So as you can see, I've ironed on buckram there onto the back of the cotton fabric. So it makes it feel like It makes it feel like it's a bit of a canvas fabric once you've actually fused it onto the fabric. So you're probably going to ask where I get my book room from. from. So um, I will drop the link in the description once this video is finished. I, there is a group called Tanya Fabrics Group. Tanya knows if you say can I order some book room that Becky has? Tanya will know exactly what what it is. It's three pounds a meter and it's like 100 by 100 and you get a lot of use out of 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. So trust me, it is the way to go. The next one that I use is, um, you would have seen, if you were a sewing quarter fan, you would have seen me use this quite a lot on the sewing quarter. This is generally the only thing that sewing quarter actually offered at the time. Um, but I actually actually do use it in slouchier bags. So it's a non-woven and it's a medium, a medium weight interfacing. Yeah, you live by Tanya, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I tend to use either hemline, I know it's back to front and I do apologise and I'm really sorry I still haven't figured out how to switch the, the lens around or whatever. So I use either hemline or visoline or visoline, now you're probably going to have a go at me for pronouncing it wrong. I use the, is it 270 um, one, generally I use it for um, mainly linings that go into the bag um, and it gives you still flexibility of the fabric so this has got the hemline on which is the medium weight non-woven gives you the flexibility and also when you um, iron it out it there'll be no creases to fuse this though is a lot harder than it is to fuse buckram so with Bookroom, you can have your iron on really hot with loads of steam and you can fuse it to your fabric. With the medium weight, non-woven uh, non, non interfacing, you do need to have your iron on a low to medium setting. You don't rub the iron over, you pick up your iron and move it. You're basically pressing as you go along. I'm lucky I have an industrial press, but I do, however, use an iron still too. So, yeah. Okay, next. Um, so, we're going to go on to some heavier ones, even heavier ones. Decaville, 
I'm hoping you've all he heard of Decaville. Decaville is part of Vieslene or Vieslene on however you want to pronounce it. So you can get it in two weights. You can get Decaville Light and Decaville Heavy. Decaville Light is ideal. It's like a cardboard. Feels like, um, feels like leather on the top. It's got a gluey side. You do need a you do need a basic quite a lot of steam to put this on and a, um, a heavier iron because um, sometimes it doesn't fuse fuse sorry and you need a lot of heat coming onto it. Um yeah so if for the likes of this um let me I have got a few bag samples here. Let me just get the purse. So for example, this is a necessary clutch wallet that I made, an old one. See, I use cork here as the body. Inside, on the back of the cork, I actually fused Decaville Light. So it gave me a bit of structure within my purse. Because with the necessary clutch wallet, you cannot use, and this pattern, by the way, is by Emmeline Bags. I must mention that. Um, this pattern, you can't use like serve foam stabilizer or um, or fusible fleece. So you need to use an alternative book that gives you a strong, strong structure. So because I was using cork, which is heavy anyway, and heavy fabric. I use Decaville Light. So if I was using cotton fabric as the body, I would have used Decaville Heavy. Now I haven't got a piece of Decaville Heavy. Or have I? Yes, I have. Sorry, going down. <laughs> right, sorry. Right, Decaville Heavy is twice as thick. I don't know if you can see that. So it feels like cardboard but well it yeah when you move it up and down but it actually feels like leather also it's quite robust um also it gives you that body that you need for likes of the necessary clutch wallet because if i was using fabric and i've got the harder one it means it gives me that structure and even when i'm squashing it together it, it's stopping me basically so yeah so you need to figure out the pattern before you actually go out and use all the different types of fabrics and the interfacings and all that look um before you actually go out there if you're still questioning if you're still questioning um basically um what to use always ask the question within the group i'm happy to help with no matter what pattern you're doing from any designer i want you to be able to finish and accomplish that actual pattern that you're making because there's nothing worse than so much frustration when you actually can't finish that pattern i know i was there 10 years ago crying my eyes out because there was no one there to answer those questions for me. And I don't want you guys, all those beginners, to go through that. And bear in mind, I've been sewing many years prior to that. So, um, the next thing is your main stabilizers within a bag. So, let me just make sure I've got my right samples. Right, so the main stabilizers are in your bag are fusible fleece um, some people use craft wadding I'm not a fan of it and I'm putting my hands up I only use craft wadding for likes of cushions and stuff um, and quilts and stuff like that because it's basically so flimsy and you tend to find that your bag won't last and I know there's going to be some people that are um, I'm going to say, well, my bags last. This is personal opinion, so please do take this with a little pinch of salt. <coughs> so, 
I use fusible fleece with when I actually do a slouchy bag. So for instance, this one is a slouchy bag, which you can fold up, put in your suitcase. I won't fold up that way, but you can fold it up, put it in your suitcase. In this bag, I've used, <clears throat> uh, I've used basic buckram, buckram light and SF, no, no, forget about the SF, um, H640 <laughs> Visaline Fusible Fleece. <clears throat> so to put this on to the fabric, you will need a pressing cloth, an old tea towel. I've gone for the best looking tea towel. Um, with a bit of steam, put the basically, so you've got your fabric, your interfacing then you've got your on top of your interfacing you will have your fusible fleece then you will put your pressing cloth on so if your iron can't hold steam um damp that pressing cloth a little bit spritz it with some water and hold the iron over for x amount of time that the manufacturer's instructions will give you <clears throat> it's trial and error when I first started out investigating all the different interfacings and stabilizers that were on the market, I actually had a squash, a squash book or um, a sample book of everything that I did and I wrote down everything. Okay, I used several fat quarters, but it was there for when I actually came to designing bags. A few months ago, I actually pulled that that sample book out that I made and then basically reused it as I was trying to see it as what beginners could cope with and stuff like that. So yeah, that is one of my go-tos. Scrunchy, like this bag, you can scrunch it up, but also gives you a bit of body in the bag so it will stand up right. Um, so the other thing that I use is, just bear with me, get rid of those. Right, the other thing that I use and I love, so you'll notice a lot of my bags can, um, which bag is that, Susie? Is that this one? Or was this, um, this one? Okay, so, um, so the other thing that I use is foam. Foam stabiliser helps the bag stand up with nothing in it. So basically you can go out and about, it will stand up happily on its base or however. But there is a bit of a, some people can't get on with foam within their sewing machine. That's down to because you're probably using the wrong needle, which I always, whenever I'm making a bag, put a size 16 into my sewing machine, no matter what. I also, when I sew, because I only use sew in foam, when I sew the foam in, I always trim back. I don't know if you can see that. I always trim back in... Um, I always trim it back off the seam allowance, so I always trim back to the sewn line. So when I actually, um, when I actually come to making the bag and putting it all together, there is no bulk in the areas. Um, it's from yours clothing for large girls like me. <laughs> um, so you see, this bag is um, by a designer who doesn't design no more. Her name name is Emma, and she's her patterns are called mk designs and i'll put a link in the description for you later on it's called the hippo hobo however i've shrunk this down loads so um this is a 50 percent the pattern is quite a large bag so i can explain that to you um so uh also good thing about foam is a lot of you are quilters and probably want to get into bag making. 
you can actually quilt with foam so if you can see here I've just been having a play so a few of my bag patterns that I've designed for sewing quarter in the past and there's a few more that's coming yeah I'm a few months in advance I've designed a few more coming next year plug um, that are quilted so when I have a quilt when I want it quilted I will use foam no matter what because if I've got a H640 which is the fusible fleece you don't tend to get much of a loft um, I don't know if that's what you call it um, in quilting but you don't get much of a loft when you're actually quilting and you, then you can't there's no point in quilting it basically so yeah right so the only other thing that the only other thing that I like to use is to make my bags that have got structure and I know um, I'm going to put bag feet on it I will use a plastic canvas which is I think is a tapestry thing um, really so it's a plastic canvas as you can see it's meshy um, it just basically goes in between your um, bag base your outer bag base then you've got your plastic fab um, plastic canvas then you have your lining basically it is so it gives you a better um, stability so it doesn't actually fold uh, fall over and stuff like that also with bag feet they have two little prongs that you have to bend so they can actually go through these holes here and you can bend it into place to hold it into place I also go one step further um, and you will see this quite a lot in my videos that are coming up with my latest patterns I use gaffer tape as well so once I've put the bag feet through and I put the, bent the prongs, the, the prongs, Rebecca, um, I stick gaffer tape on top so it gives that really robust feel. So now I picked up a bag from out of my cupboard full of all these bags that I've designed through the years um, and it's got no base. But this bag, if you've got this pattern from Sewing Quarter, um, the on the go bag, you can actually put a base in it. You can actually, when you close it up inside, just take the stuff in out. When you close it up inside, this line in here, before you actually close it, put a plastic base in it. You can, I've seen some people actually, <laughs> I've seen some people actually, uh, baffer tape. <laughs> gaffer tape, baffer tape. Um, I've seen some people actually put studs on it as well on the on on the go bag. I want a firmer bottom, and so do I. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this bag, for instance, this is a standalone bag, so it can actually stand up. Um, you can't really see it. <laughs> da -da. There you can. Um, it's actually foam. So I've used um, hemline medium weight interfacing on every piece of fabric that's in there apart from the pocket lining. And then on the outer two pieces, I've actually used um, foam. I've sewed in foam. Right, so ones that I don't use, and this is gonna cause so many arguments and I do apologize, and it's not what, it's not what, I want this group to be about so please take it with a low you're going to take the mick out of me now please take this with a pinch of salt <laughs> right so heavy let's start off with you want that bag um I worked out I can't personally release it to until August August the 15th so watch your space it will be coming out they there will be panels for it as well but yeah watch your space um so without going into details there is patterns that i cannot release until later on next year because i'm into a 12 month contract with sewing quarter and the sewing quarter 
guest designers will be nodding their heads with me at this present moment. So yeah, so please bear with me through next year. They will all be, be released, but slowly. And each pattern that I do release, I am filming step-by-step -step instruction videos for you to sew along, because I know a lot of you are beginners, so yeah. Right, so going back <laughs> to the, um, yeah, Lisa Lamb's nodding her head there, yeah. <laughs> um, right, so going back to the stabilizers and the few interfaces that I don't use anymore. So I'm not saying I haven't ever used them, I'm saying that I have used them and found something that's better for me. So before I use Visaline foam, I use something called um, headliner. So you're wondering, what is headliner? Headliners from the car industry. So they line the roofs and the doors of the old fashioned style cars of headliner. Headliner is a foam. Now in, in the UK, um, they used, you used to be able to get headliner um, that had a fleece or a felt on it, which gave it a bit of body. So I'm not saying you can't use headliner, but it is drastically thinner, the foam is, plus there is nowhere in the UK at the moment that are putting the extra layer on. So if you can see, I've got a white side and I've got a grey side. I don't know if you can actually see that because I've got light. The white side is um, like a felt or oh, it's, yeah. And then you've got a foam, which is the grey side. As you can see, they're a bit like the fossils that you get in the rocks and stuff like that. You've got the foam at the bottom and the fleece at the top. The fleece is what gave this body, but there is nowhere in the UK, I don't know about America or anywhere like that, that you can actually get hold of the one with the fleece back. If you can, grab it, right? But if you can't, don't buy headliner. No, my personal opinion, I don't buy headliner because it doesn't last. The foam rips because we're not using the Pacific glues that the car industry or the car manufacturers actually use. So I don't actually use headliner no more. So that simple reason. Also, I used to use something called, which is a heavy sewing stabiliser. I used to call use something called a uh, stiff uh that please don't quote me but it's by um so lazy so it's like a cardboard it can be scrunched up ish um you stop buying it for that reason too yeah susan yeah correct without that without that fleece back in there is no reason to actually use headliner and because we haven't got that glue anymore um or if we use that glue on normal fabric the the fabrics tend to burn um because i have tried it i'm not i'm not gonna lie i have tried it and you have to have well interface um well ventilated um area so yeah i personally have stopped using it for that reason so i've used i'm going back to this I've used this in the past as a sewing, a substitute, basically. Um, so I have used this in the past, which was a substitute for what I use now as Decaville. So this is like a sewing. I don't use it because when you turn the bag right side facing out, this area leaves loads of creases. And I'm a person, I'm a perfectionist. I actually like to iron the bags afterwards once I've turned it right side facing out because not actually I can't remember the last time I actually used that one um but I managed to find the packaging somewhere in my studio at my mom and dad's house okay so um my next one that I don't use is 
because I found this way too heavy on my fabric and it's called um, Pearl On and it's Deca Bond and it's 809. So this is the... Hi, can you see me? Right, so I don't know what happened there. Signal went. Right, so as you can see, I know it's back to front and I do apologise. Um, that is the actual, um, the brand that I basically don't use no more. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of bit left from it. I've got about a metre. It's iron on. I'm not saying you can't use it. You can use it on your bag bases, but it's not robustable. Um, so, yeah. So, I don't use that no more. Um, going down, drop some. <laughs> right. You probably think I've got a problem with this one brand, but I haven't because I actually do use some of their stuff. Um, so lazy. <laughs> um, this one's called, this one's called Firm. Now, I must admit, the other day I was thinking when I was working out what interfacings I do use and stuff like that. I still actually do use this, but it's very rarely I use this likes of in structured bags on the base or in the flap so it's like a like a piece of paper um yeah i think my connection went down um unfortunately uh sorry <laughs> um so it's like a piece of paper it's got a fusible side which is this one here and it's got a harder side if you're wanting to use this brand, um, this, I oh, don't mean brand, um, if you want to use the firm so lazy, I advise you only in the areas where you need firmness, so that would be like the bottom of the bag or like the flap. So, yeah. Right, so another thing that I don't use no more is... And because, uh, and this is only the fact because I have found that Decaville Heavy works a lot better when I'm turning it right side facing out. Um, so I don't use Pearl On Pearl Tex 71F anymore because, yeah, if you can see it, it leaves quite big creases and I don't like creases whatsoever. I like a neat finish. But the like I say it's personal preference, like the Emmeline purse that I showed earlier on, you I used to say use that in the flap, but that was before I actually got introduced uh, introduced to Decaville Heavy. So yeah. <clears throat> uh, da -da. Right, last thing I don't use, and someone asked the question in the group yesterday. Uh, where do they get their Visaline uh, fusible fleece? Let's put this fleece bolt in the comments. So, like I say, this is my personal opinion. I don't use it no more because um, it doesn't iron very well. It gives creases and stuff. So that's heat and bond um, high loft fleece. So as you can see. Right, um, so as you can see, it's a lot thinner to the actual Visaline version. The Visaline version is um, so much better. It also, when you iron it, it gives a better finish. But like I say, it's personal opinion. Yes, you can buy this a lot cheaper, um, but the bolts are a lot smaller. So you only get like 50... 50 centimeters wide so yeah yeah so that's all the interfacing and stabilizers that i physically use like i say if you got any questions keep them coming i will answer any questions obviously after the live now i'm not going anywhere because uh on friday <laughs> becky's got a new um a new bag pattern coming out so yeah so, would you like to see it? I need these thumbs up. I'm not going to show it before I don't see the thumbs up. So, yeah. <laughs>
uh, what inf interfacing would you use for cork? Um, right, so that's a sore subject, Denise. Um, so if the cork is backed with a strong cotton, I would only use a non-woven interfacing on the back. If I, if it's a very thin cork, I will use buckram, um, which is the woven interfacing. Or if you're American or Australian, that'd be SF 101. So I'm getting quite a lot of thumbs up. I can't see the thumbs up here. So we need a bag making retreat. Yes, Lisa Lam, we need a bag making retreat. So. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm about to show you this. This has been a passion of mine. I've been designing it for a few years now. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's called the Commuter and it's a backpack. The reason why it's a backpack is because I will tell you a bit of the story. I'm on a crutch or I have two crutches. Um, because I have an illness and it affects my back so yeah so I need something with comfort but I take my laptop near enough everywhere with me so I needed something for me to carry um, something to carry my laptop in so I've designed a backpack as you can see it's very um, friendly to stopping robbers getting in so it's got two quick release locks and it's got a main outer zip it's got a quick access slip pocket here and on the back is a padded strap a padded cushion so in the instructions i tell you you don't have to do it the padded instructions if you can't um get it through your machine, I'll tell you different ways. There is a downloadable coming out. Yeah, I can show mine, not yet. <laughs> yeah, you can show it in this group, Susan. Susan Watt is one of my testers and I must admit, thank you to all my testers. I'm doing it now. So thank you all to all my testers because I'm really dyslexic and my grammar is so poor. So I, now realise what some of the girls at the second quarter were going, oh, not another Becky Alexander Frost pattern, because <laughs> they must have worked hard doing it for me. So, and I apologise to second quarter now, because this <laughs> has been vain of my life for the last four weeks, because, bless my testers, they were saying, you spelled this one, or where's the full stops, or... Um, can you explain this again please because it doesn't actually um, it doesn't actually make sense so it does actually make sense now so I'm putting it out there it does actually make sense there is a follow along video for each section so yeah it's all self explanatory yeah thanks princess <laughs> um, it's all self explanatory so yeah yeah so this Friday it launches as a digital pattern and then the week later the paper patterns should be physically in my hand to be able to send out. So on Friday I'm thinking of launching the pre-order for the paper patterns as well for you guys. They are on their way. Um, I had notification today that they, up, they have been packed and they are on their way. So yeah, so I have thought about the ones that don't like printing out or like digital technology, I have gone out and actually physically had them printed. So I need them brought, please. <laughs> so yeah, so it's aimed at, you rock. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, it's aimed at confident beginner to intermediate. However, after this is coming from my testers who have not seen the videos, um, and some of them were very beginner bag makers and yeah so they managed to complete it so yeah I would say if you're a beginner you can still buy it I will easily talk you through it and I think you're here how do we get the patterns right so 
I would easily talk you through everything and the videos are there. Plus the first video, you'll be in stitches because I'm giggling all the way through it. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I finished editing that this morning. So yeah. Right, so where do you get the patterns from? Uh, I will drop a link all over Facebook of where to buy it from. It'd be from my Etsy shop at the moment. I'm actually in talks with a um, a distributor for the paper patterns, but I'm still in talks um, to try and get it all around the world um, so they can sell it in fabric shops and stuff like that. But it's working out the trade cost at the moment so yeah so at the moment you can only buy it through myself for the first four days there will be a discount code as well so watch out for that discount code that's just a launch of the pattern we all all designers well most designers actually do that for the first three or four days so yeah grab it while the discount's on so yeah that's it for this week so next week um i'm going to so Lisa Lamb's in here somewhere. Yeah, she's flashing up somewhere. Lisa Lamb is um, has been selling some PU, super shiny PU, uh, metallic. And yes, I've brought some. And I know a lot of you have brought some on pre-order. So, and but a lot of you have never used PU. So I'm going to talk you through how to sew with PU. That's this live show. Also, um, yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> if you can like, keep liking, asking questions for the video, just ask the questions and I will happily answer them a bit later on today. I've just got a bit of YouTube editing to do and then I will answer as many as I can of the questions. You are bad, I had to get some. Well, that's Lisa Lamb, she <laughs> sourced some of the most shiniest PU I've ever seen. So yeah, I can't wait. Um, according to my mom, because obviously I film this in my house, in my apartment, shall I say. Um, my main studio is at my parents at the bottom end of the town. And my mom says, there's a big parcel. And it's got that lady's face on. So yeah, Lisa Lamb has sent me a parcel with my PU. So tonight I'm walking down there and grabbing that PU. So yeah, I'm also going to try and use it on my Cricut. So a lot of people have been asking if it will work on the Cricut. So I'm going to investigate that. I like sourcing out things, but I can't do that until next week. So yeah, so next week's live is about the PU. So if you've got any questions about PU, next week I will ask the question I would ask beforehand if you have any questions and then just basically wheel them off and I'll try and answer them within the um, the show. Also, um, the following week, which is Christmas week, I won't actually be doing a live. Um, I'm putting that out there. I want Christmas week off. So, yeah. But the 30th, there is a, an evening live session where I'm going to be making something from an author's book with permission from the author and from the publishers so yeah yeah so watch your space right see you all next week goodbye